All right. Let us talk to someone who is actually doing something about the uh, problems and things going on in the state. The owner and president of uh, Vibeco Vibrators, a Rhode Island-based company, Carl Waddenston, the man from Wyoming, is on the Talk of the Town line. Carl, good morning. How are you, Bruce? I'm good, thank you. So nice to talk to you. Excuse me, I, 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 you cut out on me. I was being very complimentary. I said it's so nice to talk to you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and, 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 you know, this, this weather is, is, is a... Uh, it's a bad sight for some people, but for our business, to see the freezing cold, it's a good thing for us because it really presses a sense of urgency to get modern techniques to fix a problem that Mother Nature causes for us. Tell me about how this works now. Is this your main product, the, this uh, roller that you're making available to the cities and towns? Tell us about it. Well, no, we, we have a couple divisions, an industrial division and a construction division to this company. And this is just one of 1,300 products that we make here in Rhode Island Whoa. that we market all over. So we're, we're a pretty broad and deep company as far as product line. But anything to do with vibration, that's our bailiwick. Sure. Uh, you're uh, all about a lot of uh, other industrial applications, and you've offered... Every city and town in the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, a roller, it's a vibrating roller, and it uh, really improves pothole repair. Tell yeah, us so, about so, it. So, Bruce, what traditional methods are that we have so many holes that afflict us here in the state and all over, all over the world, really, is that the traditional methods they use are what they call throw and go that really frustrate all of us because they, they're trying to keep up. They throw the cold patch into a hole, tamp it down with a shovel or a hand tamper or roll over it with a truck, and that's called a, a throw and roll. And then you really don't get the proper compaction in that hole to adhere, you know, the material in there, and it just pops out, you know, in a pretty short order. So what we're doing, vibration's been around for a long time. When they lay down road beds, brand new roads, they use big vibratory rollers. You see the guys, the, 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 the nickname of steamroller, you know, little kids see them and the guys up there, that's actually vibrating to make that asphalt, that bituminous asphalt, hard down onto the road bed. So we're just taking a process of miniaturizing a roller that somebody can push easily, that a crew can handle, it's not overweight, and it's simple, easy, quick, and it does the job. That's great. That's great. And you're making these available. Why have not the cities and towns just gone out and, uh, and had these right along, Carl? Well... I'm sure it's not for lack of... More Bruce, have they ever had a more burning platform than this year in, this, in our state? Never mind the rest of the United States. It's been the worst winter ever. I mean, look at, look at, look at the Weather Channel with the freeze of the Great Lakes. Yeah. Look at these, the, the, these, these, these uh, big cold fronts coming down from, from way up in the north. And then all of a sudden we have a 60-degree day and rain, and it's become so bad that people really need to have, this is the burning platform, it's become so bad that they need to change the methods. And plus the cost of repair, Bruce, for, for citizens, our cars cost us so much money these days that when they break down, it's a costly repair. So you have the perfect storm. You have weather, you have, um, you know, the, the cost of cars, and you have people that are just frustrated in an economic downturn where you don't want to spend that kind of money. So they're looking for the cities and towns to upkeep the roads that we pay high taxes for, right? Right. I'm with you, yeah. and and I, I, I am 100% with you. I was behind a dump truck in uh, one of the cities and towns the other day and doing exactly what you described. <laughs> the, the truck stops, guy gets out, a couple of shovelfuls of uh, coal patch in the hole, drives the truck over it, on to the next hole. And you know it's a matter of minutes before that is all going to get shaken loose. And uh, you have the solution. Now, I see in the paper today, I see Mayor Fung uh, at work out there on yep. the streets of Cranston. So uh, uh, does that mean that they're easy to work, or is he just a, a, a more astute mechanical mayor here? Well, it's like the Geico commercial. Remember the Geico commercial with the caveman? Yes. 
It's so easy. The mayor can do it. Charlie Lombardi, too. Give Charlie Lombardi credit. He was out there as well. And and the key here, Bruce, is a couple things here. You know, we've made this offer, and you have to have people. This goes to this goes really to the root of Rhode Island. Are the people that work on our cities and towns, are they ready to do the cultural shift of changing the methods that they've done for so many decades? Are they ready to do that? Do we have people in the leadership of these different cities and towns willing to get behind their people and support them as well? It's not to throw them a piece of equipment, Bruce, because we're going out. I'm going out personally and training every crew, looking every crew member in the eye, looking the leadership in the eye, because we have some stipulations that we want the leadership of the town, whether they have a mayor, town manager, the head of the DPW, whatever it is, I want them out there, any council members that are interested in this, because if we don't have their full support for their crews out on the road, they're going to use it a few times because it takes a few minutes longer, Bruce, mm-hmm. and then they're going to put it in the shelf. So you've got to use it or lose it. And we have a follow-up mechanism that we're going to do as well because I don't want this to be an exercise in future. Utility, I really want to see the state pothole free. A pothole free state. We would all like to see that. But I, I didn't realize that you had a, a clause in here, if you will, that uh, you insist that a public official get out there and work with this thing. Uh, oh, that- you bet. And we'll, we'll send that over to your station if you have a, a post. And it's very simple. All it is, all it is, Bruce is that we want buy-in, and buy-in comes from the top. You know that. Sure. It has to come from the top. Now, you're not talking about buy-in in a financial sense. You're talking about getting no, no, on I'm board. No, buy-in in the, in the emotional, the mental, the heart. Yes. Feeling it from the heart, that they're behind this. And, and you talked about you saw the truck throwing the coal patch in there and doing that. Well, we have a lot of statistics we're going to send you that we've gotten from the Federal Highway Commission, from AAA, from all different sources. So the traditional method that we do costs, and these are, these are figures from like 2002, 3, um, it costs $62 to fix a hole the traditional way. Throw it in, go, because they have to come back so many times to repair it. And the Federal Highway Commission has stated, vibratory roll this stuff, not a plate compactor, because they're too hard for the guys to use. It's another piece of equipment that they try and use. Mm-hmm. And if you do it the method that we have, it's a $20 fix. So imagine to a cash-strapped Rhode Island, right, with all the holes we have, we can count it. There's got to be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, times $62 versus $20. If I was up at the State House, I know I'm going to want to pay the $20 fix and make sure that they're lasting and our citizens like them and they're smooth versus $62. You know, it, it, it makes financial sense, Bruce. Well, of course it does. Uh, now, you talk about having buy-in from the top, and I'm with you there, but you know as well as I do the culture in this state and the way that things are. You've got public works departments uh, that are, well, uh, they are used to doing things according to their own culture, and uh, things don't get done really quickly. How do you address the cultural issues f- you know, a little bit know, down Bruce, from the top? Bruce, in our organization, we follow uh, a principle, Toyota Production Systems, right? Mm -hmm. And it's lean and it's continuous improvement. And there are two main pillars that our organization works off of. And I go and speak and work with a lot of people in the state and and, and the things that I do. The first one is respect for people, both up and down. The next one is continually improve yourself. So I'm, I'm, I'm of the, of the, uh, thinking that everybody wants to do a good job, Bruce. Show them how to do a good job. Show them that you care about them. Be passionate about what you do, and you can transform a whole doggone state. And that's a topic for another day. We'll talk to you, talk to you about the Department of Environmental Management, how we've helped them see and learn, and they are unbelievable at what they're doing now in this cultural shift. It will blow you away. Well, all right, you're uh, out there fighting the good fight and getting the word across. Now, you have, it says here that there are 14 communities. Do you have any more than that that have uh, jumped on board here with your offer of the rollers? Uh, and you know what, Bruce? I'm not going to push people. They have to want to do this on their own, and I have to look them in the eye, and I have to feel that they want to do this because just like stopping smoking, losing weight, exercising, 
you got to want to do it inside, and your team has to want to do it because that's where the success is going to come from. And we built our organization on success. I want to build the state of Rhode Island on success, and we'll get it, Bruce. Believe me, I'm, di- I'm, I'm tenacious at this. I'm relentless at this, and I will stay on this task until it's done. Well, I think you're really on to something because you know how people will generally look toward their peers, and I have to believe that uh, this is not lost on you, that if one town or one city is jumped on, you're going to see neighbors and everybody knows each other, and there's a little bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of the cool kids are uh, jumped on board with this. So I think that you're very, very astute to be doing it this way, and I think it's a matter of time before you get all 39 cities and towns to leap on board and take you up on your offer to get the pothole repairs done with your roller. How, how great will that be in the state? That will be a cultural shift of epic proportion in this state, Bruce. Boy, I'll, I'm right with you. Let's watch for it. All right. Let's watch for it. Let's see what happens. I, I'm going to sprinkle some pixie dust on the state like they do in Disney, and let's see the magic happen. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Well, all right, Carl. Great, great pleasure. There he is, the boss owner and president of Vibe Co. Vibrators in beautiful downtown Wyoming, Rhode Island. He's a success story, and he's sharing his technology. Gives cities and towns a free roller, a vibratory roller, that cold patches potholes better. Nice job. See what happens here. And we'll keep uh, on this. We'll see how many towns have jumped aboard and see how... Many will continue, and if your hometown will leap on or not, let's uh, get the word out and find out out how soon they're going to jump on. And if they're not, well, is there another side to this? Is, Is there a particular reason, or is it just the same old, same old? Yeah, we'll find out. Hey, it's talk of the town, and heavy snow has indeed started.